Hello, welcome to Ignani.com. Beginning Microsoft SQL Server 2012, Level 1, Chapter 1. Introducing Microsoft SQL Server 2012. SQL Server, as we all know, is Microsoft's flagship database product. It delivers an unparalleled, highly scalable data platform, capable of handling the most demanding tasks and workloads. SQL Server, has matured over the years since its first release. As with every release, SQL Server 2012, introduces many new features and enhancements for developers, administrators and for end users alike. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial, to help you to learn SQL Server 2012, and is designed to be simple but effective. The topics are divided into chapters and sections with each section covering a small topic and presented in an order, with each section building on the previous one. This tutorial is a team effort by individuals, who have been using SQL Server for many years at their workplaces. This tutorial, uses SQL Server 2012 evaluation version to demonstrate, and all the sample codes, are created using SQL Server 2012. However, you should not have any problems in running the sample programs with SQL Server 2012 Express. SQL Server 2012 Express Edition is available for free. We at Ignani.com, hope that this tutorial will help you learn all the core elements of SQL Server 2012. Who, is this tutorial for? It's almost for everyone. From a person who is just starting with a database, to those who would like to learn the new features of SQL Server 2012. We have tried to cover everything that is necessary for a beginner, but it covers, a lot of information for even those, who have been using SQL Server, for quite some time, making it a reference for advanced users as well. SQL Server 2012 Editions with the launch of SQL Server 2012, Microsoft has changed the list of available editions with new ones. Business Intelligence Edition now joins the standard, Enterprise, Developer and Express editions. However, they have dropped the Data Center, Work Group, and Web Edition. Feature comparison of all these editions, is not within the scope of this tutorial. Obtaining SQL Server 2012 it's always better to try, before you buy. Let us download the evaluation edition. So go to the page www.microsoft.com, slash SQL Server. On the page, you can find the link to the latest release. From the site, you can download, an ISO image, for either the 32 or 64 bit system. Assuming that you have successfully downloaded, or purchased the installer, I will continue with the installation process. If you have downloaded the installation file, it will be in an ISO file format, which can be installed directly, by using, virtual CD DVD software, which mounts the ISO file, and thereby, saving the process of burning a DVD. If you are installing on Windows 8, all you need is double click and the file shows up in a folder. For this demonstration, I have already downloaded the installation file in ISO format, and will be installing on Windows 8. Installing SQL Server 2012 Make sure that the ISO file, is either mounted using a virtual drive software, or burned on a DVD. Or it has been extracted onto a folder using proper extraction software. Navigate to the folder, where the setup.exe is. And double click on the setup.exe file, to begin installing SQL Server. This is the planning screen, since we will be installing a new SQL Server 2012, click on the installation link, on the installation page, click on the first link at the top which reads, New SQL Server Standalone Installation, or add features to an existing installation to start the setup process. 
The setup will now check for the support rules, which will identify any problems that might occur during the installation of SQL Server setup support files. Make sure that all the rules are passed. While warnings can be ignored based on its severity, if there are any fail tests, make sure to correct them, and rerun the test before continuing the installation. As you can see all the rules have passed. It's safe to click the OK button, which will take me to product updates screen. It now checks online for any updates for SQL Server. If it finds any, it will display them here. Click next to continue the setup process. Another round of test to look for any problems, which will have to be addressed if any, before proceeding. If you come across a Windows firewall warning, you can ignore and continue, but it will have to be corrected after the setup is complete. If you have a license key, which is a 25 character key, provided by Microsoft, on purchasing the license, you can enter it here, else, you can select the evaluation option from the edition drop down, which has the largest set of SQL Server features as documented in SQL Server books online, and is activated with a 180 days expiration. You can also select the Express Edition from the Edition drop down, which is free to use. In this demonstration, I will select the Evaluation Edition. Click Next to continue the setup process. On the License Terms page, Accept the license terms before you can proceed any further. If you wish to help Microsoft to improve their product, then select the second checkbox on the screen, with which you agree that you would like to send the product usage data. Click Next. The next screen will display three different options to select the features that are to be installed. The first option is SQL Server Feature Installation. Select this one to install SQL Server Database Engine Services. Analysis Services, Reporting Services, Integration Services and other features. The second option is SQL Server Power Pivot for SharePoint. Selecting this, will install Power Pivot for SharePoint, on a new or existing SharePoint server, to support Power Pivot data access in the farm. Optionally, add the SQL Server Relational Database Engine to use as the new farm's database server. The last option, All Features with Defaults installs all the features using the default values for the service accounts. This is what I will select for this demonstration. Click Next. This is an important one. The feature selection screen, where we can pick and choose what we would like to install. I will leave all of them as they are. If you have gone through this process with previous versions, I would like to point to small change, Business Intelligence Developer Studio or Bids is missing. It has been replaced with SQL Server Data Tools, which is used to develop reports, create packages, and build cubes and dimension objects for analysis services. It is not recommended to install SSDT on the production system, but for this demonstration and for this tutorial we will need it. Click Next to continue the setup process. Setup will once again run certain rules based on the features selected. To determine if there are any issues or missing components that might block the installation process, it seems there aren't any issues in our system, click next. In the installation configuration screen, we are given two options. Either to install a default instance, or a named instance. If this is the first SQL Server instance that is being installed on your system, it will be automatically installed as the default instance. However, you still have option to install as a named instance, by simply clicking on the radio button to select the option, and enter a name as you like, since I already have another version of SQL Server installed on my system, I will choose named instance, will enter the name as SQL 2012, you select your option as per your requirements, once you've done, click next, the setup process will calculate the disk space requirements to calculate whether you have enough storage space available on your disk. Once it's done, we'll display the disk usage summary. We have enough space available, click next. This will lead us to the server configuration screen. Here we will have to configure the user ID and password for running the services that are being installed. 
Microsoft recommends that you use separate accounts for each SQL Server service. However, if you do not wish to have separate accounts, the least that I would recommend is to create a separate account that is dedicated to SQL Server. Few points to follow regarding security. On your production environment, it's always better to create SQL Server specific accounts for each service and different accounts for development and production servers. Always use a strong password for the account used for SQL Server, and preferably be a limited account with less rights than the local administrator rights. Never use local administrator, or domain administrator accounts. Give only the security rights that are needed. Also we can configure the startup type for each of these services. Few points to consider. In configuring the startup type of the services, SQL Browser should be running if you anticipate to allow remote connections. SQL Agent is required for running scheduled jobs. Analysis Services, Reporting Services should be running based on your requirements. Note that whatever is your setting now, you still have the option to change them, from the SQL Server Configuration Manager, or Services Management Console, or Command Line or from cluster administrator tool if you are running SQL Server in a failover clustered environment. For our demonstration, I will leave them as defaults. The next screen is the database engine configuration screen. The first tab in this screen, is for specifying the authentication mode, and administrators for the database engine. If you would only want to connect using Active Directory authentication, you can choose Windows Authentication Mode. If you have any applications connecting to SQL Server using username and password, then select Mixed Mode, which includes both SQL Server Authentication and Windows Authentication. If you select Mixed Mode, then provide a password for the System Administrator account. For this demonstration, I will select Mixed Mode Authentication. Add all necessary users as administrators who should have sysadmin access. The next tab is to set the data directories. Here you can change the path for various default options. I will leave these two tabs with their default values and continue. If you have selected analysis services to be installed, then the next screen will be analysis services configuration. Here we can choose the server mode which can either be a multi-dimensional and data mining mode, or the tabular mode. In multi-dimensional, and data mining mode, the analytical objects are stored in the OLAP engine, and queried using MDX. In the tabular mode, analytical objects are stored in the X-Velocity engine, and queried using DAX. If you are not sure which one to go about, then I would recommend to go with the default which is what I will be selecting here. Next, specify the users, whom you would like to provide administrative permissions for analysis services. Click next. If you have selected to install reporting services, then, you will be seeing the reporting services configuration screen. We have two options, the first one to install reporting services in native mode, which is what you need to select unless you would want to have the reporting services for SharePoint, for which you need to select Reporting Services SharePoint Integrated Mode. I will cover the differences while handling the reporting services. I will go with the default options for now. After a few more configuration screens as you can see in the video, you will land up at the error reporting screen. Now, the setup will run one final test to check whether there will be any issues that might block the installation, click next, and verify the SQL Server 2012 features that will be installed, for one final time, if you need to make any changes, click the back button, once you are all set, click the install button, this takes quite some time, time to take a coffee break, after some time, if everything goes fine, which is what happened in all the cases till now with me, you should be seeing the complete screen with the message, your SQL Server 2012 installation completed successfully, with product updates. It also provides details about the installation, and links to the summary log file for you to review if required. 
click close, and you are done with the installation. What we covered in this video. We saw where can we find the evaluation edition version of SQL Server 2012, and also how to download it. We saw the complete process of installing SQL Server 2012 with all the features. In the next video I will be covering, SQL Server 2012 tools. You can find, a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how to videos, and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Post all your questions at our site. We will be happy to help you. We want your learning process to be as interactive as possible. Feel free to contact us.